is the way some great adventures begin. from the line, who can say what excitement and unexpected pleasures they will eventually bring? And to whom? Some will go east, some west, some will find a home near, others far. But in each, there is inbuilt freedom of movement, a means to far-flung travel joy for anyone, not only on the open road, but off the beaten path besides. This one, for instance. Now, where do you suppose it's bound? And to whom will it belong? define happiness when you have everything you've ever wanted. And coming up, two weeks with the most wonderful man in the world, in the mountains of Grand Teton National Park. fence together, hand in hand. Then sit side by side on the bank of a river and look at the world and dream and plan and wonder and wonder. hotel was very grand indeed.
for the very first day, he decided that we ought to go mountain climbing. That wasn't my idea of a honeymoon, but what could I say? So we went to school together. Mountain climbing school. For this you must do before you really climb. There are tricks to learn. He naturally took to it like a Swiss um, yodeler. Basically, an elevator girl. Then, awfully suddenly it seemed, there we were, ready to go with full climbing outfits, ropes and packs and axes and things, and, and a real live guide to show us the way. He gave me a souvenir for luck. Of course, the guide pointed out that the charm hadn't done its original owner very much good. Anyway, it's said that people climb mountains simply because they're there. And there they were. So, we climbed one. the top, he certainly was glad to see me again. on earth later on. Another souvenir. A medal for bravery. 
above and beyond the call of wifely duty. I was beginning to discover that this husband of mine had a yen for buying me gadgets and knickknacks, which you must admit is a lovely fault. Next, we went exploring through the valley of the Tetons. some wild swans, trumpeter swans. They're almost extinct, very rare. I know they are because my very smart husband told me so. We even went buffalo hunting with a camera. <laughs> Brave hunter, no afraid at all. But squaw stay way back. On the other hand, well, the elk all look quite harmless to me. Nature's hat racks, he called them. Cute. But not to be trifled with, it seems, even if a girl feels so inclined. It was at the Laub and Teton Indian Village I got my next souvenir. A native handbag, and just about the right size to keep the honeymoon loot in, at the rate it was starting to pile up. Even the weather in the valley was exciting. One day, we watched clouds like fluffy pillows roll in ahead of a mountain storm. We felt safe and secure inside. The next day, it dawned bright and clear again. A misty dawn along the river. A rosy dawn on the peaks of the mountains. A bright dawn up in the snows. And a time for gratitude and thankfulness. We rode the ski lift up Snow King Mountain. It was worth the scare for me, the view I mean, 
Oh, for all that magnificent valley they call Jackson Hole lay there at our feet. We own the world. A honeymoon is to water ski. Or try to. I didn't do too badly myself, but my husband did very well indeed. A little show-offy, perhaps. Such grace. Such form. Such wonderful fun. But a honeymoon is a dream that must someday end. And now it was time to start home. One of my new wifely duties was to act as co-pilot and navigator. And almost immediately, I changed our course. He favored a very direct route back. I fancied a little side trip to the town of Lander, Wyoming, for no more reason than the name sounded interesting. Why not, he said. And away we went. Lander is a pleasant little town. Plenty of places to buy things, especially souvenirs. We promptly named it Two Gun Dan Cupid. My bag was almost full by now with all the miscellaneous tokens husband had bought. Still, maybe it was Dan Cupid who had something to do with what happened then. We stopped so my husband could shed his warm coat. And suddenly, we both had the same idea. There was an unmarked road right there. Not much more than two ruts in the dust. And just for the joy of adventure, we decided to take it, to see where it might go. and thousands of sheep. We'd stumbled on a wool ranch, if that's the right term, and I'm sure it isn't. Eventually, way back in the hills, we discovered a wagon with an old man sitting by it playing on a Jew's harp. He had a partner, it seems, and they were both very friendly. Then there was quite
quite a bit of conversation, which I didn't pay much attention to because I was listening to the music. Finally, it came out. They'd been talking about, of all things, jade. Green jade. It seems the hills were full of it here. If you had the patience and time to look. And we had plenty of both. So before you knew it, we were on our way to a rock hunt. Orchestra in the back seat. We went as far as we could in the car. Then it was a long climb up the hill. But the jade was way up there. Nothing would do, of course, but he had to go on alone to get me a souvenir. A souvenir? souvenirs, but the one I'll cherish most and best is a small, not very pretty, jagged piece of green stone, memento of an adventure off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. 